This is the ongoing tale of a bunch of guardsmen who got drafted into the Inquisition after the regiment was reduced to a mere 37 men by a combination of orcs, heretics, more orcs, tyranids, and of course, their own leadership. Currently, they're working for an Inquisitor that is the 40k equivalent of Professor Oak. He provides teams and missions to interrogators who need to get some leadership experience before becoming full Inquisitors. The lot of these guardsmen is rather thankless. They're matched up with five more less combat-focused team members assigned to an interrogator and sent out to fight the enemies of the Imperium. Our story starts with Nubby and Twitch vainly trying to open up the locked exits of the shuttle after being told that their new squad contained three psychers in addition to an assassin, tech priest, and the interrogator himself. Sarge is screaming internally as he remembers that the last psychers he worked with accidentally summoned a bloodstorm and turned into a demon host the second they tried to do anything. Doc is captivated by the sight of the fat little man-child chewing on the seat's headrest. Heavy has decided that this is all above his pay grade and is making himself comfortable by laying across a row of seats. The interrogator explains that the team is on its way to find out why a planet has not been supplying psychers to the black ships. One of the psychers asks Scarge to stop screaming. It's making it hard to think. The All Guardsman Party and Dude, Where's My Psyker? Current Psychic Phenomena Count, zero. Current Perils of the Warp Count, zero. So no shit, there we were. Stuck on a small ship with three psychers, on our way to perform a top-to-bottom search of an entire planet, all for the sole purpose of finding MORE psychers. We did not have high hopes for this mission, Hell, some of us had serious concerns on whether we'd even be sane when we got there. The journey itself wasn't so bad. Instead of being guests on a navy vessel, our interrogator actually had his own small ship. Sure, almost all the space was taken up by our interrogator's huge-ass cogitator array, but at least we didn't have to deal with any navy ratings trying to take our weapons away or bitching about us setting tripwire traps in the corridors. The problem was the people we had to make the journey with. We didn't like any of the psychers. One was a smarmy tool who spent far too much time talking and making himself look pretty. Then there was the Weasley creep who constantly scanned everyone's thoughts and ratted to the boss. And finally, there was the psychotic man-child who would occasionally throw telekinetic tempo tantrums. We called them Face, Snitch, and Nutjob respectively. Compared to these guys, the snooty social assassin chick and the incredibly antisocial tech priest weren't that bad. The interrogator was infinitely worse. Our interrogator was Adept Path and apparently some sort of data wizard. It took an entire ship just to carry all of his cogitators, and he loved those machines like they were his children. Unfortunately, the bastard wasn't a complete shut-in. Instead of staying in the dark with his cogitators, he constantly held meetings and forced so us all to see. attend. Not a day would go by without him calling us together to update everyone and on what sleep. little clues he'd found, or check up on how we were preparing for the mission or lecture us on proper inquisitorial behavior. It was horrible. On our previous mission, we happily ignored everyone else on our team while they happily did likewise. This time, we had an interrogator who had never used a gun in anger, giving us unwanted advice about combat drill, kit loadout, regulatory compliance, and freaking etiquette. This was all done in a tone of smug mm -hmm. benevolence. He understood that we were just dim-witted manual laborers and couldn't be blamed for not being as smart as he was. That's why it was his duty to do all the hard thinking for us. The cherry on top of this was Snitch, who would report what we were thinking to the boss. Every time those lectures filled us with murderous rage, the little weasel would go and tell on us, and we get a second lecture on proper attitude I'm toward so authority. Off. God, Emperor, we hated him. Eventually, we arrived at the planet, which had earned the Inquisition's attention by providing the black ships with nothing but pathetically weak psychers completely unsuited for any use whatsoever. There were probably dogs out there with more psychic talent than the strongest psychers sent to the ships, but when the black ships had scanned the planet, there were no unsectioned psychers running around, so they took the pathetic tithe and left. Now, we were here to find where all the psychers that should have been on a planet of this size had gone. The gist of all the little briefings we suffered through was that the disappearance of this scale meant that we were either dealing with corruption in the government, a massive cult, some kind of psyker eating demon, or Eldar. This meant that unless proven otherwise, we had to assume that EVERYONE was in on it. 
So until the interrogator got some sort of evidence, we wouldn't have any outside support. The posh assassin chick and face did all the social legwork. They would circumspectively shake people down for information while we loomed in the background, or preferably down the street at a cheap diner. Apparently, they were very good at it, since everyone aside from us thought they were absolutely delightful to be around. At the end of each day, they would transcribe everything they found and beam it up to the interrogator to process. The other information gathering team involved the tech priest and snitch, hanging around in the equivalent of an unmarked van. They spent all day driving around, hacking wireless networks, scanning people's thoughts, and dumping all the information back to the boss in orbit. We got to drive the van and fetch snacks. We didn't all get to leave the ship. One or two of us were always stuck at base since it was apparently our job to babysit the nutjob psyker. It really was babysitting too, because we'd have to clean up the messes he made, get food for him, calm him down when he threw a fit, and entertain him when he got bored and started pulling rivets out of the walls with his brain. Poor Doc got this job more than anyone else. He just wasn't very good at saying no. Aside from that though, it was an improvement over the trip out there. We were occasionally able to get away from our teammates, and whoever was backing up the social team got to visit some pretty high-class parties. It was a nice opportunity to snag some good food and, in Nubby's case, pocket the silverware. After a while, the interrogator called us together and informed us of his brilliant deductions and masterful analysis. These involved money trails, newly found political power, falsified ship manifests, and other stuff we didn't really care about. It all boiled down to someone in the government selling the psychers off planet. Once our interrogator was done explaining his genius, he had everyone but himself rebased to a few floors of apartments located in one of the largest cities on the planet. After the team was settled in, he sent us out to take some long, hard looks at a bunch of nearby banks. We enjoyed being away from him in his constant meetings and quickly turned the building into a proper guard barracks. Which is to say that Twitch wired the place up with dozens of traps, Nubby started Nubby fencing nerves. stolen goods out of the garage, and the rest of us built a set of barracks between us and the outside world, as well as between us and the rest of our damned team. It felt good to be home. Before long, word came down that our interrogator had identified the operations banker, and the whole ground team was sent off to get some answers out of him. So, while Heavy hung out in the van with the socially unacceptable members of the team and ignored the ugly little man prodding his brain and demanding candy, the rest of us infiltrated the bank. That's to say, put on suits, which succeeded in making us look exactly like guardsmen in suits, and marched behind Face and Assassin into one of the planet's largest banks. There was a little bit of trouble getting through security, which was entirely our fault. All of us had kept our LAS rifles underneath our suits and Twitch was still carrying a few debt packs. We weren't very good at disguises. Luckily, between Face doing some Psyker stuff and the Tech Priest hack van messing with the security system, we got in fine. After we were past security, Face and the Assassin greased a few palms and screwed with a few mines. Before long, we all sat down to a nice discussion and tea time with the banker. While, well, they sat, us guardsmen stood around and looked ominous. Various falsified credentials were shown, psychic tricks were used, and a discreet uplink was attached to a cogitator. Then, everyone left happy and healthy. We decided to exit via the back way, so as not to trouble security again, and also because Nubby had wheeled out the tea trolley while we left. The boss and the rest were pretty excited about what we found on the bank's cogitator. The next few days were spent in relative peace, while the interrogator worked with the rest of the team to map out a web of corruption and bribery. This lasted right up until Snitch called us one evening and said a large group of hitmen were moving through an empty floor below us. We were locked and loaded within seconds, and started laying fire into the hitmen from multiple sides before they could even hit the edge of the perimeter. We had good cover, good firing lines, knowledge of local terrain, superior weaponry, much better training, and the element of surprise. It was a slaughter. The last three of them were pinned down by Heavy and Twitch, while the rest of us flanked them when everything went dark and horrific screaming started. When the lights returned, all the hitmen, dead or alive, had been reduced to chunky salsa, and we could all hear Nutcase giggling upstairs. <laughs> this killed the mood. Everyone eyed the psyker nervously as we packed up our shit and got the hell out of there before authorities showed up. 
We elected to exit via the garages in a cargo truck, while the rest of the team used the shuttle on the roof. None of us wanted to be anywhere near the Psychers after that show, also Nubby and Twitch didn't want to leave anything behind. Psychic Phenomena Count 1 Perils of the Warp Count 0 We rebased to another almost identical set of apartments and went about guardifying it again. Except this time, Twitch was given free reign on the entire buffer floor instead of just the entrances and windows. While this meant that entering our base via the main entrance took about 15 minutes and carried a very real risk of grisly death, we knew that people were actively trying to kill us. Also, we didn't want to depend on anyone who turned their bodies into chunky salsa and giggled about it for our perimeter security. The rest of the team started using air transport exclusively after the assassin nearly lost a hand when she didn't follow Twitch's entry instructions correctly. After a few days at her new base, doing scan trips and otherwise laying low, Snitch found a young nascent psyker powerful enough to be noteworthy. So, our team of elite inquisitorial agents started staking out a toddler. Our unmarked vans followed the kid day and night, from his hab, to his daycare, to the playground, and everywhere else you would take a toddler. Imagine five heavily armed men all clustered around a screen, watching a kid being pushed on a swing, while behind them an undeniably creepy bugger relays what everyone in the playground is currently thinking, and a psychotic man-child picks his nose and mutters to himself. Eventually, our weird stakeout paid off. A bunch of suits showed up and grabbed the kid and his mother. So no shit, there we were. Five guardsmen and two psychers, in the middle of a playground, chasing a bunch of G-men, carrying a struggling woman and a small child. The woman and the child were screaming, the G-men were calling for backup, our psychers were yelling about one of the G-men being a blunter, and while we all had our guns out, none of us wanted to open fire in the middle of a playground. We were gained on them, being a sprinter is a survival trait in any guardsman, but right as we reached them, one of them slapped a button on their chest, and another one of them started to float in the air as the area surrounding was covered in frost. We all immediately slammed into an invisible wall and were all scattered across the ground while Snitch stopped and started muttering himself and gesturing. None of us wanted to be in the middle of a Psyker fight, so we flanked the invisible shield, left heavy to cover the enemy Psyker, and resumed the chase. The G-men had gone to ground in a playscape and opened fire on us with small arms, but were having trouble because the child was apparently emitting random bursts of static electricity. We decided that survival was more important than civilian casualties, and returned fire from whatever cover we could find. And since we were damn good at our jobs, things went pretty poorly for the G-men. We nailed most of them in the first few volleys, which convinced the last few to keep their heads down while we flanked them. Behind us, Heavy was laying stubborn fire into the enemy Psyker's shield, and Snitch was pressing him hard. Then, with a little pop, the enemy Psyker disappeared. While Heavy and Snitch watched the spot where the Psyker had been, we rushed the remaining G-men. Our interrogator was helpfully reminding us over the Vox that he Do wanted prisoners. Say. So we charged in to beat the shit out of the last few survivors. Unfortunately, at this point, their backup arrived in the form of an unmarked government flyer, which immediately began to lay down some serious suppressive fire. This was higher stakes we were ready for. Bugged the hell out while the remaining G-men piled in with the kid and his mother. The flyer wasn't done with us, though. As soon as his doors were closed, it lifted off and got ready to do a strafing run. We all hit the dirt and dodged the first pass like true guardsmen. While behind us, the enemy Psyker had reappeared with another pop and the fight resumed. This time, the fight was over in seconds. The nut job had finally caught his fat ass up to us with a little slorp. The enemy Psyker turned inside out. That done with, both the Psykers and Heavy turned their attention to the Flyer, which decided that it was time to cut its losses and got the hell out of there. As we got back up out of our cover, the interrogator called to tell us that the Assassin Face had successfully tagged the Flyer with a tracer, and the Tech Priest would be shortly picking us up to assault whatever facility it landed at. Second Phenomena Count, 3. Perils of the Warp Count, 1.